Okay, how to heaven viewers, fans. Behind me is my son's 2021 Toyota Corolla hatchback. And you wanna hear something funny? The horn. That's what we're working on today. All right, so the horn is below this panel. So that's step one, remove the panel. All right, so you gotta take this panel off and the easiest way to do it, Toyota used these little clips here and they look like mystery clips because there's no slots or anything, but here's what you do. Push it in, get your fingernail, pops right out. So we're gonna take all these off. Step one. All right, we've got the clips out. Panel comes out, simple as that. Make sure you put that panel back in. And I'll hand this to my assistant and I'm gonna show you the placement of the horn. So Toyota, for some reason, they made a great car and put a little baby horn in here and it's a joke, especially when you're in traffic and you're trying to warn somebody from stealing your lane or something like that. Terrible horn. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so here's the horn right here. And it's got one 12 millimeter bolt holding it on. Now, uh, let's go and look at our horns. Wow, it's beautiful. Can I see? Show it to the viewers. In gold. This thing's got to be really nice. Aha. So it is a twin horn system, a high and a low. What that means is we can use one factory bracket, but we're also going to have to mount it to something else. Called fake let's, turbos. Yeah, let's flip it over. Okay, there's our mounting stud right there. I'm going to open that up. See what else is in the box. Oh, dual brackets. Doesn't get any better than that. Wire ties and wire. Are there any connectors in there? Any kind of terminals? No. So what that means is they gave us bare wire here. And unless you're just gonna put the bare wire through there and twist tie it, which I highly recommend against doing, what you need to do is you'll have to get some push on connectors here and we have some. And so we'll make one's positive, one's negative. I'm not sure if it matters because it's just a coil in there, so it won't make any difference. Um, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna put some connectors on here, and then we're gonna try to figure out how this is gonna go into the factory wiring. And obviously the bracket goes right there. We're gonna have to come up with another 12 millimeter bolt to bolt it to the radiator support. All right. Okay, so we're working right here on the horn. That's tidy. What? There's a connector. Oh, this will one. it reach? Will the connector reach? You can just, I no. think you just pull, push a tab and pull. Yeah. All right. Now let's show. This, this is what. Toyota is trying to pass off as a horn. Beep beep. So that, or that's a new horn, and here's the old horn. And they use a single monotone horn versus the low and the high note that we're gonna put in. So let me show you what we have here. First off, here's the factory horn right there and the connector comes in from the bottom, which is neither here nor there. They have this bracket, it's an extension bracket. There's one bolt that goes to the radiator support. Now, 
Now, I'm not really sure why Toyota felt the need to use this additional bracket. Um, it's got to stop here so that the horn can't rotate. So, if we were to take a wrench and loosen this, you can see that it would flop around, which is why Toyota put this little leg here. This is just a stop. Now, the question is, do we even need any of this? So, this comes with our factory, or factory, or the aftermarket horn, um, which is the HR300, 100% copper coil, car horn. All right, they call them shell horns, kind of like a conch shell. Anyway, you got um, two nuts, two brackets, kind of thin brackets. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put a bracket, uh, there's a small hole and a large hole. So we're gonna put this. They didn't even give lock nuts, so they're not worried about this thing loosening up. So, oh, I mean, my assistant uh, points out that the lock occurs on the other side. So there's a lock right there. And that keeps the bracket in place. However, it doesn't keep the nut in place. And since they don't have any serrations on this nut, theoretically the nut could loosen up. We're not gonna worry about that. So we have now two horns, both of them with a bracket on. So, configuration. We can do this and configure like that and then just use the single bolt and not worry about the bracket. But will it fit? Let's find out. So here's what we got. Without the bracket, you mount to this hole here. The problem is you can see how the sheet metal is um, protruding here. That also locks the other bracket in place. So we're gonna use a little extension bracket that bolts to the um, radiator support, and then we're gonna bolt these horns to the bottom of the bracket the same way that Toyota did. And I'll show you what we're doing. So first thing we do is take the factory bracket off. And it's stuck. All right, and since Toyota used the white bolt to mount this bracket to the radiator support thusly, we're going to try to use the bracket. See this little ear? It keeps getting in the way. So we can mount it like this over at an angle and see, without having to bend that little bracket, um, we're gonna mount these dual horns at an angle. And I'll show you what that's gonna mean. Um, basically what it's gonna mean is that our horns are gonna be down there at an angle. Not that it matters. And you'll notice the orientation of the horns so they blast out the sides. We haven't tightened the nut yet, so you can adjust this anywhere you want and then tighten that nut. Um, we'll deal with the wiring harness later. So this is our bracket setup right there. And these are still loose. And we're gonna try this mounted to the car and see if this clears those little protrusions on the radiator support. All right, so here's where we're working. Here's our horn setup. Let's see if the bracket fits. Not a lot of room to get your hands in there. And we wanna put the bracket and this is just a test fit because we're going to have to make the harness before we actually bolt this whole thing together. So let's see how it looks. And we're actually in there very close to this. We can, we can slightly modify this ear here and just lift it up a tiny bit. But there's your horns. And again, you can face these any way you want. We're probably gonna face them close to each other. And the light guy, where is, do you see the wire? Oh, it's still there, I got it. All right, so the wire is right here. So we're gonna to have to come up with a system here where we make a connector for, for that and then connectors for this. And knowing that we're going to use this bracket here as our ground. 
so it'll be a dual purpose. So what we're going to do is explain it at the bench. Which way would you recommend we orientate these horns? I like this. Well, we'll work on that in a minute. Getting ahead of yourself. So, what are we doing with the wiring? I'm going to show you. Since the bracket goes on the car, and the way you rotate the horns affects the wiring harness, what we do know is we're going to need two short pigtails that go from the, uh, one of these terminals to the ground. And so we'll have to make a pigtail there and a pigtail here. Then we're going to use this wire and we're going to make one additional wire. It'll go from here to here and then it'll have a uh, male uh, terminal to mate with the factory plug. So I want to show you the plug here. This is the plug that goes to the horn. You'll notice it only has one wire. That's the positive wire. That's what act activates the horn. And when you look in here, it's just a, basically a standard female push-on connector, which makes our life a lot easier. So now we're at the point where we need to start getting some connectors together. So I open up my connector case. And let's see if we can see what we can see. So we know the horn, there's the factory horn. And all they did was they just shielded this uh, wire, or, or terminal I should say, basically. So they shielded it, and it's just your standard spade connector right in there, push-on connector. So let's look at the new horns. So we've got these two little prongs there. Now again, this works on the principle of electromagnetic energy. We're working with a DC system. This is way above uh, necessity for this video. But all I'm explaining to you is that this is a coil. It's not polarized. And what that means, it doesn't matter where positive goes and it doesn't matter where negative goes. In other words, I can use this one to ground on this horn and this one to ground on this horn. Any combination you want, as long as one is connected to ground and one is connected to the power. The power we know had the female connector. So we're gonna need first off a male connector. And here we go, these are male connectors. And this is just like the one that's in there. So one of our wires is gonna need that and that'll go to um, the wire on the car. Now if you're wondering why I took two of these out, it's, it's because I'm making two harnesses. Why? Because I haven't done the reveal yet, but it's been in enough videos. Here's what we got. 2021 Toyota hatchback in wind chill. It's white metallic. 2021 Toyota hatchback. And that one is in the magnetic gray color. So, I'm going to make two harnesses because I'm replacing the horn on both of these. So now I've revealed it. Yep, that's what replaced the Lexus RX350. Why? Because it's just a heck of a lot more fun to drive, modify, and it gets better gas mileage. All right, getting back to the wire harnesses. So we're going to need some female connectors to go here. We're going to need four of them. So let me show you what they look like. Go in here, you can use that style, you can use this style. So they look almost the same, but what's the difference? The diameter of the wire, you see that? So what we wanna do is we want this diameter. All right, so battery died. Typical YouTube uh, shuffle. Anyway, here's the wire that they give you. And it looks very, very tiny gauge. So I'm gonna go check out the wire on the car and match the gauge that way. All right, so I'm just gonna go through this and I am gonna find enough wire to make two of these harnesses. And I won't bore you with the details. Okay, so this wire is gonna be long enough to do everything we need it to do. In other words, we can take this wire, cut it in half, and we're gonna make two harnesses. One for magnetic gray and one for wind chill. 
So there you have it. There's the positive. For the negative, we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're gonna go from one to the other and then to ground. So we're gonna make the black wire pretty much the same length as the red wire. Let me see how we'll do that. We'll go one, two, and there, and one, two, and there. So what we'll do is we'll take this ground and we will make two grounds from this wire, just like that. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip all these ends, we're gonna tin them, and then we're going to use these connectors here. And I'll show you that a little bit later because I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. But I will show you a little bit so you learn something if you don't know already. So I'm gonna show you how I do my connectors. What I do normally is I take my terminals like this take my, my uh, cutters and I twist it off. And if you're probably wondering why would you do that, because I prefer to use heat shrink. So I'm gonna solder all these connectors and I'm gonna use heat shrink. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take this, go into there, and then I'm gonna create a pigtail over here, just a, not a pigtail, more like just like a little folded piece, put the other connector on it. And then the third will be this one. And this will go into the uh, factory wiring harness. So one thing I haven't shown yet is the terminal end that I'm going to need for the ground wire and that's going to be something like, like this. It's just an I-loop terminal. So the 12 millimeter bolt will go through here. This will be ground. Go to one lug, one lug over there. Okay, so here's your, your eye terminal. Here's the 12 millimeter bolt, and you can see that it's a perfect fit. And this area here spaces itself outside the washer, so we're good to go. And that's what we're using for terminals. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit about what I do here. I am going to strip the wire just a little bit. That's all we need there and we're gonna strip it actually on all ends. Just like that. Actually stripping it smaller on one side than the other, only because the uh, terminals are different sizes. I need a longer terminal for one and a shorter for the other. So, there we go. We strip them all. Hold on. This is a dual wire. So it's got an inner and outer wire. What does that mean? Can't use it for our purposes. You see that right there? It's got a, it's a dual wire, so we can't use it. Okay, so we went back to the plastic tub. Sorry about that. Seemed to have kicked you guys around. So we went back to the plastic tub and I found some more ground wire and so I'm going to use this ground wire here rather than the one that you just saw. So what that means is I need to cut these to length once more. I'll take two please. And let's see. Right about there. There's one. And now we're going to cut this one here. Two. All right. Okay, so what we have here is the wires are tinned and we're ready to start crimping. So we're gonna start with the, we'll start with the main connector. That's this one here. That's gonna go into the, the harness on the vehicle. And I don't really like to crimp a lot because I don't think the mechanical connection really is great, especially with solder, but sometimes it's necessary. Um, and what I'm going to do in a second here is so I've got that crimped on there. 
I'm going to crimp the other one on and then I'm going to take it over to the soldering station and then I'm going to flow the solder onto this connector and that'll make a really really permanent nice connection. Okay, now this is crimped on just enough to get the job done. We'll go over here and we're going to solder flow some solder onto it and I'm not sure I can get you in there but I'll try. Okay, so see if I can get you in here. So when I solder, one thing I do is I always clean my tip with a sponge and water. Then you'll apply a little bit of solder to your tip. Now remember, solder is attracted to heat. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to heat up your connector. And hopefully you can flow some solder onto the connector once it's heated up. Get it up in there. This solder is the wrong diameter. It's only because I'm out of the correct diameter solder. I should be using uh, 1 16th inch rosin core solder. So you just want to flow that in there. Get it to flow into your connector. And then once you do that, you've created a nice joint there that should not pull. And I'm going to try, this is the wrong, it's rosin core, but it's 3 30 seconds. And 1 30 seconds or a 16th would be great. I just don't have it. So in the soldering iron, the tip is too small for um, this solder, but we're going to try it anyway. So we'll apply the solder and see if we can't get this thing to flow. difficult because your terminal will act like a heat shrink and so it doesn't want to flow onto the terminal and so you can see that the solder didn't stick to that at all. In case you're wondering this is a piece of silicon. Henry makes a lot of roofing products. This is the bottom of the barrel, literally the bottom of the five gallon barrel of the 100% roofing silicon and it makes a great soldering pad uh, workstation. So. I want to get yourself one of those if you know anyone that does any roofing. See if they have any buckets, five gallon buckets left over, and see if you can uh, peel that off the bottom of a bucket. It's a pretty great little pad. So you see what I did there? I heated up the terminal, pushed it into the solder, created another joint. That should be a real nice permanent joint. Let me review this one here. Probably want to hit it again, get a little more solder flowing inside of that one. Um, just do it like this. There we go. Getting that solder to flow in there. And you've got two terminals. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put heat shrinkable tubing here and then I've got two more terminals to do and I'm not going to show you all of that. I think that's a good little starter tutorial on soldering. Alright, in case you don't know, this is heat shrinkable tubing. So it's plastic tubing that shrinks when you put heat to it. This was from Amazon. It's a nice little set. Uh, you go through it pretty fast once you start doing stereos and alarms. Uh, I am going to cut this like that. Then we're going to apply this. Now since both ends of the wire were open and accessible, I really didn't need to put the heat shrink on first. So here we go. Here's the heat shrink and you can watch it shrink with heat. Amazing. Nice connection. We're going to do it to this one over here, the same way. Put that on and shrinky dink. There you go. All right, that's heat shrinkable too. So we've cut straight through the middle of this wire and we're just going to peel it back thusly, peel this off. Then we're going to take this wire here and we're going to fold it over like that and we're going to twist it. 
giving it a real good twist. And the purpose of this twist is so that we can put the terminal, put this wire into a single terminal. And we just keep going around in circles to make this diameter, the right diameter, to fit into a terminal. Now, if you'll remember, we have two terminals here. One of them is a little larger in diameter than the other, and I'm going to fit it into here. However, before I do that, I'm going to tin this so that the solder will flow, and I'm not going to do it on camera. We've tinned this just a little bit. You can see that we soldered that, and just cool it down a little bit. We're going to put the connector on, but before we put the connector on, we're going to take a piece of heat shrinkable tubing and push this down as far as we can because this gets really hot when you're doing a joint like this. Then we'll put this on and we will then crimp it, getting a mechanical connection as well in there. Once you have that done, we're going to come back with solder and that will solder it, we'll solder it to the connector. So let's see if we can turn you over here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but I am going to tin and then continue flowing solder into this joint. Just like that. We want to get a nice connection in there. And this is probably overkill. Most people don't work this way, but this is how I work. Cool it down. That's why the silicone pad is so nice, because you can heat it, you can wet it, and it stays. And this is on here. It, it's not going to rotate. It's on. We'll push our heat shrink down and we will shrink it. All right. Now we only have the one connection left right here and that one's pretty easy. We're going to put some heat shrink on. We're going to put our connector on. We are going to crimp it just a little bit. Like that. And from here, we're going to solder it again. Get the solder right in there. Get that solder to flow right into the terminal. And that should be a good connection. Cool it. Next, we'll put this over, little heat, shrink it, and there you go. This goes into the power on the car, this goes from one horn to the other horn. And we're going to make a very similar setup for our ground wire. The difference on the ground wire being that we are going to use, instead of the male spade connector, we're going to use one of these which is an I terminal to go through the 12 millimeter bolt. Then we'll use a um, female push on connector at this end and then again in the middle. Off camera. So here's where we're at right now and I'll show you the progress. What we have is two sets of wires for two, two horns. Um, two sets of horns. And so this is going to be the ground, and we'll go ground here to ground there. And let's just go ahead and put it on right now. There's your ground wire. Here's the other ground wire. And again, it really doesn't matter if you were to do the ground here and a ground there. It makes no difference whatsoever. I only did it this way for the length. And then we're going to do the positive, which is going to go like that. And then this over here will be the other positive, and it'll go right there like that. 
So now we've got our wire set up. This is going to go to the 12 millimeter uh, mounting bolt like that. And this gets plugged into the factory wiring harness and we'll tighten this in the orientation that uh, best works best. And we're done. All right, so we've got the horn assembly. We're going to put the wire on first and it just plugs right in. And the reason you plug it in first is because the wire comes from the bottom of the horns. Plugged in. And then we're going to just bolt it on. Do you think anyone has been so impatient that while one person was installing it, the other one tested it? Yeah. Well, that won't happen here. How we doing? Let me get my hand in there. You might have to. Get Gotta get in there. Down. Hang on. It's in. Done. that little piece there that's hitting. Remember we said we were going to do something about it? Mm -hmm. We didn't. Wait, what, what little piece? This piece right here. We don't need it. All right, the horn is in, and now it's time for a horn check. That is a horn. Let's check it out. And that's what it looks like. There's the finished installation. Just like that. All right, if you like my videos, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You know the drill. Thanks for watching How To Heaven.